I just found out one of my favorite things to do in Avid now works in Premiere. Toggle source record. Let's do it. Okay, here we are in Avid. We're going to do toggle source record in Avid, which I've always loved and I'm so excited about everything that I'm telling you right now. I use toggle source record conservatively about a thousand times a day. So right now, here we are in my timeline. You see the blue bar of the timeline right here matches the blue bar of the record monitor right there or your program monitor, whatever you want to call it, or the timeline monitor. Uh, so we can see right now I'm looking through this timeline and it's playing right here. But if I want to cut a sequence into a sequence, I'm going to have to come over here. So we see that I've got baseball sequence loaded in the, in the record monitor. And then over in the source monitor, it's just a clip. That's just my logo right there. Just one clip. But I'm going to take this clown sequence. I'm going to drag and drop it over there. Now we've got that as a, a sequence, clown sequence. Now the clown sequence is in the source monitor. If we want to see it, we need to toggle source record, which is natively a button all the way down here. Follow all the way down there. But I also put it up here uh, out of the command palette on a button to button reassignment because it's easier to see than going all the way to the bottom of that timeline. So here it is. I also have it mapped, by the way, as a, as a shift tab. That's how often I use it. I just go shift tab and I go back and forth between the two. So if I click this button right here, which is toggle source record, boom. You notice that it lights up bright green. The playhead is bright green. That matches the green of the source side. I am now seeing the source in the timeline, uh, in the timeline window right here. The source monitor in the timeline window. Works with just a clip too, by the way. Doesn't have to be a sequence. I just use it more frequently this way. But here we are with this sequence. And if I wanted to just, let's say, cut this, I'm gonna put my in, I'm gonna put my out. If I wanna just cut this into that sequence, we're gonna cut that part of the clown sequence into that part of the baseball sequence. I can then toggle source record. Now I'm looking at my source side, or I'm sorry, I'm looking at my timeline side again, my record side again. I put the playhead right here, and then I hit V for overwrite. Boom, there it is. That stuff from the clown sequence is now in my baseball sequence. I have effectively cut one into the other. Worth noting, in Avid, toggle source record is the only way to see the waveform on a source clip. So if you go over here and you toggle source record, now I can see the waveform of my source clip. Otherwise, I can't. It's not like Premiere where you just click waveform or click the face of the clip, right? To see the waveform or see the actual video. You've got to use toggle source record. Now, in Premiere, toggle source record works completely differently. Join me. Okay, here we are in Premiere, and I am so, so, so excited because I love toggling source record, and now we can do it in Premiere. Here's how it goes. Normally, if I'm working on this documentary right here that's about my cousin and his kidney transplant, and I wanted to insert an interview from Howard, I would come over here and double click on my, uh, on my timeline, the Howard string out with all the interview of Howard right here, and I would either find what I wanted and you know, copy paste, or I would come over to my text side and I would, you know, look at the transcript and find the thing and highlight it and dump it in. But you know what? I can also do it this way now too. There are so many different ways to do the same thing. So right now I've got my Howard string out here. I could have also right taken taken it out and and pancaked it on top. And then I would pancake at it this way, right? I would take this. I would come down here, I would insert that there, boom, pancake editing all the way down, right? But I don't have to pancake edit anymore because now I can look, I can close that entirely. Here I am. I can uh, come over here. Let me bring this to the side. Let's bring this tab to the side right there so you can see. So here are my windows now and I'll stretch these, these windows back out. But here are my timelines, right? This is my timeline bin and I want to work with the Howard string out. You can come over here and right click and come all the way down to the bottom and say open in source monitor, open in source monitor. So I'm going to click that right now. Boom. There it is in the source monitor, right? So now I'm looking at 
the the timeline in the source monitor that sequence is now loaded into the source monitor right here we can see Howard string out Howard string out but I can also see it in the timeline like you can in Avid and this is how that goes once it's over here I can come down to the wrench down here and I can click on that wrench and say open sequence in timeline open sequence in timeline right there boom and there it is now watch here is Howard talking about a whole bunch of stuff that I want to cut in so now I'm looking at it in the timeline see how I move the playhead now the playhead is red to let us know that we are not looking at a normal sequence right it's red to give you a heads up when I'm in my regular sequence it's that blue that we're used to right so here I am it also says in the tab Howard string out source monitor it's letting us know it's loaded in the source monitor right there on the tab for you stop the presses here is my favorite use case for this exact function in Premiere specifically. When I have synced the sound up from a clip, right? Like field audio, I had to sync it to the clip. Now I've got audio to the clip in its little sequence, right? I've made its own little sequence for the sync sound in Premiere. I can click on that sequence. I can hit one number because I've mapped this functionality to the number six. So I hit the number six. It now throws that sequence up into the source window so that now I can call up the text document and all the time code that my producer has referenced in the clip, that's the clip time code. I don't even have to worry about it, right? Because I can just go call up the text find the text in the document that of the byte that she wants me to include and go from from there directly into my timeline so what i've done is i've clicked on the sequence in the sequence bin i click on it once i i hit the number six to load it in i mean if you don't want to map it to your keyboard again you are more than welcome to right click and uh and say load in load in source window and put it in the source window i like to just click on the clip hit one button it or click on the clip click on the sequence hit one button load it into the source side monitor have my text up which has the which has the uh the ai uh uh transcription and then go find the the sound the sound bite that she wants, highlight it, and then edit it right in. So I don't have to click back and forth between one tab or the other. It's already there. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to click between these two tabs, right? I just cut it right in. Beautiful. Mwah. Love it. That's the way that I found it most useful in Premiere. But you do you. How are you using Toggle Source Record in Premiere? Leave it for me in the comments. I want to know. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like or subscribe. And if you got any questions, hit me up in the comments. Feel free to check my link in the bio or the link underneath if you're watching this on YouTube.